Lesson 35, Science 7, and we have enough evidence to answer our driving question. How can some siblings be so alike and others so different? It's like when we discussed those British twins in the very beginning of this unit. They looked so different, and we wondered how that could be. Or my own children, who tended to look alike. They are brother and sister from the same parents. How did they end up looking so similar? Grab your pencil your journal slip, and your science journal, because we're going to answer this. To help us with our explanation, we're going to watch a quick clip that sums up what we've been simulating over the last few lessons. Inheritance. As you watch, I want you to write down information that will be helpful in constructing our explanation. You know, the key science ideas. As we're watching the clip, you can always pause if you need to. Here, let's navigate. and watch this first clip. When living things reproduce, they pass DNA to their offspring. Through asexual reproduction, some living things can reproduce without a partner. Offspring made this way are genetically identical to the parent. That's not what we did. Other living things, like people, yes. reproduce with a partner. This is called sexual reproduction. Offspring made this way inherit equal amounts of DNA from two parents. Each of us has two copies of every gene. The two copies may be the same, or they may be different. The combined output from all of our genes influences our inherited traits. When a couple has children, each parent passes down one copy of each of their genes. Like we simulated. For each gene, which copy is passed along is random. Ah, and it may be different for each child. Important. Each child gets a unique combination of copies of all of their parents' genes. This mixing contributes to genetic variation. Because they share genes, children resemble their parents and each other. But unique gene combinations give each individual a unique set of inherited characteristics. Looking farther back in the family tree, the parents' DNA came from their parents, so the children also share DNA with their grandparents. But the amount they share with each grandparent is only half as much as they share with each parent. Looking back to the great-grandparents, the children share DNA with all of them, but only half again as much. This inheritance pattern explains why you have more genes in common with closer relatives, like your mom, than you do with more distant relatives, like your great-grandmother. In this way, your DNA holds a record of your family relationships. Okay. Just navigate back. So, I think I get it. The rule or the big science idea is that parents pass on half and only half of their DNA to offspring. And that's random. So you never know which half a child will receive. Did you get that idea? Check your journal slip now. If you didn't, rewind and take that idea down. All right, I also have a second clip. What is heredity? This will also help us gather key science ideas we've been figuring out throughout our simulation. As you listen to the clip, I want you to mark down the key ideas that you think will help you construct an explanation. Here, let me navigate out to this. What is heredity? Why do children look like their parents? Why do brothers and sisters resemble each other? This is because we inherit traits from our parents. The pa and I'm just going to uh, skip every a little bit. You can see fertilization happening right there. Okay, and now we have an offspring with a full set of chromosomes. Each parent contributes one complete set of chromosomes to the child. This set can contain chromosomes from both of the parent's two sets. The only rule is that the child must receive exactly one of each chromosome. This is just like we simulated. It shows exactly what we simulated. Here's dad's karyotype, here's mom's karyotype, and then this is the first offspring. Since the parents contribute chromosomes randomly to each new child, every child inherits a unique set of chromosomes. 
As a result, every child will have a unique combination of traits. Some will resemble the mother and some will resemble the father. Still others will be unique, a product of the new combination of chromosomes. Ah, okay. Let me go back here. So what I heard again is that mom and dad randomly pass on chromosomes to their child and these chromosomes have genes and the gene combination result, results in a unique looking offspring. Now, the next time mom and dad go to have a child, right? So the first time they get this karyotype, but the second time they go to have a child, it's random which chromosomes are passed on. And so this child might have a different combination than this child. But I guess it's possible that the children share some of these combinations for certain traits, making them look similar. And then for other combinations or other traits, they're totally different, making them not look so much the same for those particular traits. So what are you thinking? I think we need to argue this out on the discussion board. So here's what I want you to do. First, choose two siblings from your simulation that either look very similar or siblings that look very different. It's your choice. You'll know siblings are very alike because they will have many phenotypes, many appearances in common. Just compare the data from your journal slips for offspring one, two, and three. If the children share more than half of their phenotypes in common, then they're pretty similar. Or you'll know the siblings are very different because they will not have many phenotypic appearances in common. In that case, they're gonna have less than half of their traits in common. Once you post the picture to the discussion board, also make sure to construct an explanation as to how these two siblings came out so alike or different. If you can explain how this happened for our simulation, it's easy to understand why my children look so alike or why those twins we saw in the very beginning of the unit look so different. You're gonna be able to explain so many different genetic phenomena. I would recommend constructing a thoughtful explanation on your journal slip first, and then going to the discussion board. Finally, I need you to pick a classmate and respond to that classmate's explanation. If you see somebody has already responded to a post, move on to somebody different. I want everybody to have feedback. So again, if you see somebody's explanation already has a reply, move on to somebody else's explanation that has no replies and respond to that one. Until tomorrow, keep thinking, keep learning, and have fun arguing from evidence.